You can create projects inside Cinema 4D that have placeholders, objects that you can open up inside After Effects in a comp and then replace them with assets like video, graphics, or still images. Then you can perhaps animate those layers or apply effects to them, things that you would not be able to do easily or at all inside Cinema 4D. It is kind of a process, so stick with me as I go through this. First of all, go to Working Files, go to Cinema 4D Files, and I want you to copy compositing tags. However you do that, Control or Command C or right click Copy. Open up your My Exercise Files folder here, and then paste that. You can right click and click Paste, or do Control or Command V, and then change the name of it just to make sure we don't mess it up. So I'll change this to Test. Okay, now we'll close those two folders down, and now I want you to open up After Effects. You can close this welcome screen and then import that file we just worked on. Double click here in the project panel, go to your desktop or wherever you stored that My Exercise Files folder, double click on that, and then open up Compositing Test by double clicking on it. Now, because we're going to be working with something called Multipass, we need to change the project settings. Go down here and click on this 8 bits per channel thing here. That opens up the Project Settings dialog box. Change the working space to sRGB right there, and linearize the working space. You're doing this because Cinema 4D works in a linear way when you're working with the multi-pass option. And now you need to change the depth to at least 16 bits per channel. All right, click OK. All right, now let's make a new comp from this by just dragging this down to the new comp icon there. Let's change the rendering from software to final. We have some letters here with a light shining on them and the light is animated. If I go in a little ways farther, you'll see that the light moves. What we're going to do is replace this background here, but we need to set up the project to do that. So I want you to open up this file inside Cinema 4D. So go back to the project, make sure that file is active, like so, and go Edit, Edit Original. That'll open up Cinema 4D. Now what we need to do is apply two compositing tags to this plane. We want to be able to have an external compositing tag that allows us to replace it externally. And then we need to apply another compositing tag so that we can create a mask that we can use as a track mat back inside After Effects. So first things first, I want you to go to the plane here, right click on it, Go to Cinema 4D Tags, and then go on down to External Compositing, bypassing compositing along the way here. We'll get back to that one later. Click on External Compositing, and we don't need to do anything here. We can accept the defaults. We're going to create a null object that we're going to see inside After Effects. So now I want you to just save this. Do Control or Command S to save it. Or you can go File, Save. Now let's go back to After Effects. Now nothing visible has happened here, but something has happened internally. And to see that, we need to go to the Cineware Effect. So go to the Effect Controls panel here. And there's the Cineware effect. And at the bottom, it says Commands, Extract Scene Data. Click on that, and it extracts the camera, which is the default camera in this case, and the one light we've been working. And then it extracts that plane, that thing we applied the external compositing tag to. There's that plane. And the plane is just a null object. You can see it there's a null object. So what I want to do now is add an asset to this comp that matches the relative scale and position of that null object layer. So go back to Project here. Double click to open up the import dialog box. Go find your working files folder, go to assets, and bring in this light graphics file. I'm going to add this to the comp. Right now it's a 2D layer that's just covering up everything. If I make it 3D, it's going to be illuminated by the light, this light, not the light in the original file, but the light that was extracted here. And it's also being viewed by the camera that was extracted as well. We can turn off the eyeball for plane here. We don't need to see that no object layer there. What I want to do now is connect this to the plane by parenting it. So I grab the pick whip over here and drag it to the plane and hold down the shift key so that it takes on the location of the parent. So now it's moved to the location of the null object. Now I'm going to change the scale a bit, pressing S for the graphic. And eventually we'll see the Cinema 4D file there. Now, of course, what we're not seeing is all the good stuff in the Cinema 4D file, all the text and things. But we'll fix that by creating a mat that we'll use as a track mat with this graphic. So go back to Cinema 4D. And we're going to add another tag to this plane. This one's called specifically a compositing tag. So right click on plane again, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and add compositing. Now this is much more complex, but we're going to accept the defaults here and go to the Object Buffer tab there. We want to give it an Object Buffer number. So we're going to enable number one here. Now we're not done yet. We need to tell the renderer to render out this Object Buffer. So we go up to the Render Settings right here, this button right there. Click that. We need to activate multipass. Need to turn that on. And now we need to select the object buffer from this group of things here. Click this button there. And there's the object buffer group there. Click that. And it says, which number do you want? Well, by default, it's number one here to start with. So that's what we want to accept. So we just close this down. Now we save this. Control or Command S. And now we go back to After Effects. Again, you won't see that anything changed. 
but now there's a multi-pass element, a multi-pass layer, a multi-pass pass, it depends on your terminology, stuck inside this file down here. And I want to extract it from that file. So click on that, go to the Effect Controls panel, and now we're going to go to the multi-pass settings down here. Scroll down a bit like that. I want to turn on multi-pass like that, and I want to select a defined multi-pass. We defined only one multi-pass pass, just the object buffer. I say, add that image layer. So now it's added that image layer right there. And then the original file, the original C4D file, has now been turned off. You don't see it anymore. You just see this compositing object buffer there. If I solo that, you'll see what it is. It's a mask. And if there was a camera move here, that mask would animate. But right now, there's no camera move. All right, I want to use this as a mask with this file here. So I drag it above the file. That's how you make a track mat, directly above the file. I go over here to the track mat column. If you don't see the track mat column, right click, go to columns, and then go over to modes. Go over to the track mat and say you want to make a luma mat because this is black and white. What it does is it carves out holes for the letters that you can see if you turn on the Cinema 4D file here. So turn that back on and there are our letters. Great. So where are the shadows? Well, they're hidden basically. They're being covered up by this little graphic here. So we need to put them on top of the graphic. So here's how you do that. You go down to the Cinema 4D file, make it active. Take a look at the effect controls panel here. Back down to the multi-pass again. This time I don't want to add a defined multi-pass. I'm going to turn that off. I want to add all of the multi-pass layers that would normally be included as a multi-pass that we did not select. I'm going to click on that, and a whole slew of multi-pass layers will be added here. Scrolling down a bit here, you see all these various things that have been added. Refraction, reflection, ambient occlusion, all these things here. Several of which we don't care about because we did not include them in the original Cinema 4D project. So I'm going to go up here a little bit. We did not do anything about atmosphere, so I'm going to turn off its eyeball. Did not do anything about this atmosphere. It's gone. We will work with refraction and reflection in just a moment. We did not work with ambient inclusion, nor global illumination, nor caustics. But the rest of these guys we probably want to keep. Ambient, shadow, specular, diffuse. Diffuse is the colors. So we're keeping all that stuff. Now we want to move that graphic so that we can get below the shadows. So I go up here. I need to grab the track mat and the graphic. So I hold down Control or Command to select two things there. I'm going to drag this thing down a ways here. Keep on going down a little bit farther. I'm going to go above shadow for the time being. No help there, right? Go below shadow, so the shadows will be on top of this, and there are the shadows. If I go below specular, how's that going to look? Gets a little bit brighter. Go below diffuse, and that'll bring back the original color of the background. So we don't want that. So I go above diffuse. So basically, we keep diffuse for the letters, but we don't want diffuse for the background. So that's the process for setting up a project in Cinema 4D so you can replace an asset with something here instead. But what's the big deal? I could have done this as a texture back inside Cinema 4D. Well, the big deal is that now I can do some things that would be harder to do back inside Cinema 4D. For example, I can select just this graphics layer here. I can change the scale. I can animate that. I can animate its position. Press the P key and change that as well. I can put, let's say, an effect on it. We'll just go really wild here. Go to Wave Warp, for example and apply that to it, and I can replace it. So I can go back up to the project panel here. Let's say double click here to open up the import dialog box. Let's get this vineyard video, double click on that. They replace something, I just drag it down here, hold on the alt or the option key, right like that, and I can replace that with this video file. Change the size of it to match the project. And I think that the specular is probably a little too bright here, so I'm gonna take these two guys, drag them above specular, it looks like that. So you can see how you can replace things. But what happens if we use something back inside Cinema 4D that has reflections and refractions in them? Let's see what happens now that we've done this. Go back to Cinema 4D. I'm going to add this letter D here. Uncheck that. And let's take a look at the render there real briefly. See, it looks quite lovely. You can see refraction, reflection, the light goes through it. Let's see what this looks like back inside After Effects. After I save this, Control or Command S to save it. Back to After Effects. And that D should show up in just a second. There you go. And you can see that the reflection and the refraction may not be exactly perfect. I'll scroll up here a little bit. Let's turn off refraction for a moment. Turn off reflection for a moment. Just a slight difference there. You can barely see reflection there. So it works pretty well, but you might find that when you work with objects that have reflection or refraction in them and replace the background, that it may not work exactly the way you want it to. But you do see here that it does work reasonably well. So this is how you can set up a project inside Cinema 4D such that you can then replace an asset inside After Effects. Then you can animate that asset or apply effects to that asset.